Can you talk about the goals of the Artemis 1 mission from an Orion perspective? Obviously, Orion has flown in Earth orbit before, uh, but on this mission, what's being tested for the first time? Well, um, you know, certainly uh, one of the big things is the heat shield. You know, we're getting lunar return velocities, which is uh, something that we can't really fully replicate on the ground from a ground testing perspective. So that's one of our highest objectives. And of course, tech. Uh, checking out all the subsystems uh, working together, power, uh, data, along with you know the heat shield return is very important. Of course, uh, the parachute system that we've already tested previously, but certainly uh, accomplishing it at uh, at a lunar-like uh, return trajectory is is one of the big things. And of course, flying uh, uh, flying around the the moon for up to 40 days is is going to really test out all the the key capabilities we're going to need for a crewed mission. And this is the first flight of the European service module as well. That's a whole new element being brought in for this mission, right? Yeah, so this will be our first time we'll be flying the European service module or the ESM. So we're excited to have that uh, part of our spacecraft and, and demonstrate its capabilities. Of course, as, as, as maybe you know, uh, we have the power system on the uh, European service module. We also have uh, the water capability, storing all the water we need, of course, and, and also our thermal uh, rejection capability. Uh, that's a very part, big part of the ESM. For this wet dress rehearsal campaign, um, you know, a lot of the focus is going to be on the space launch system, but from an Orion perspective, uh, what's the importance of, the, of this uh, test campaign, and how does Orion play into the wet dress rehearsal? Yeah, I mean, our our, uh, our contribution uh, to that test is is really powering up our systems and making sure everything's uh, working as it has been in the VAB. Uh, so certainly, this is a a big test for the SLS and a very important test, uh, ensure that we can get off the ground. Uh, but for our part, it's just really making sure our subsystems are still working and and uh, functioning as we expect it. I know you have more Artemis missions in the pipeline. You have more Orion spacecraft. I think you have two more here at Kennedy Space Center in various stages of preparation. Uh, can you talk about just the, the, the pace of preparation for various Artemis missions and the status of those two other uh, spacecraft over in the operations and checkout building? Yeah, you bet. Um, you know, like you said, we have Artemis II uh, spacecraft uh, going through its flow, going very well. We've both had the crew module. Uh, that we're outfitting uh, with the systems and doing uh, testing with it. Uh, we also have the what we call the service module, which is a combination of the European service module with, with, along with the crew module adapter, or CMA. So those two pieces put together to comprise of the service module. And that's also going very well. Uh, we're doing some proof pressure tests uh, with it right now. Uh, we did the, the MON side or oxygen side of the prop system, and we're going to go forward with the fuel side uh, this weekend and checking, making sure the systems are, are uh, not leaking or anything like that. So that's that is a very important test for us and overall just great progress and as those two components major parts of the vehicle uh, finish their individual testing then we'll put it together and that becomes the crew and service module uh, that's needed to uh, stack with the launch abort system the crew cabin the cockpit on this orion spacecraft on artemis one can you talk about um, how similar it is to the artemis two configuration for crew you know what's missing what is on board in a different configuration? Uh, you know, what's the difference between this Orion and a crew-capable Orion? Okay, yeah, um, very good question. So the biggest things are the displays and the controllers. Um, so the displays for the crew to understand, you know, the operations of the system, but also to be able to operate all the systems as well. And of course, the hand controllers that the crew will be able to utilize to operate the vehicle as well. So that's one big part. Uh, the other part is we're missing the seats. Uh, we don't need to fly all four seats that uh, we would normally fly with the crew. And so uh, we only have one seat uh, um, with the Munikin. Uh, Munich and Campos, and um, so that's one of the big things. And finally, of course, life support system. We don't obviously have a uh, air, uh, water, and and things that are required uh, to support crew members. So that's also another subsystem that is not on Artemis One that is on the Artemis Two crew module. But lots of cameras, I believe. Yes, yeah, so we the have views a lot of cameras <laughs> uh, and and microphones also uh, to 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 uh, understand what the the environment will sound like besides the cameras. So we'll get a very good view of both externally of what uh, is happening as we go to the moon and return back from the moon, but also internal to the cabin. We'll have lots of good visuals. And when this spacecraft comes back, I know there are some components that'll be uh, refurbished and reused for Artemis too. What are those components and what's the turnaround time to refurbish that and get uh, in a config for Artemis II? Yeah, so we have uh, some uh, what we call non-core avionics. These are very important. For example, the GPS, 
We have a GPS receiver on board. Uh, we have phaser aid antennas. Uh, we have an IMU, initial uh, measurement unit. Um, so all those are very critical components, obviously, to the guidance navigation system uh, and communication system as well. So those will get pulled off the Artemis 1 spacecraft and put on the Artemis 2 spacecraft for reuse. And the turnaround is about 30 days. Once we uh, decontaminate the vehicle, we're able to pull the hardware We'll do some calibrations, uh, minor, I would say, performance uh, uh, calibrations and adjustments that we need to do, uh, make sure there's no uh, damage or anything else with the hardware, and we'll put it back on, or we'll put it on the Artemis II spacecraft. And can you talk about your feelings? You're going to see this fully stacked vehicle with uh, the Orion on top roll out this evening. What's your anticipation level right now? Oh, it's going to be awesome. I, I can't, I, I can't have a bigger smile. I mean, it's, uh, I've worked on the program for a long time. Uh, this is a, a tremendous day, a historic day for, for not only Orion, SLS, and EGS, but uh, for the whole entire agency in the country. I mean, boy, I, I came to NASA to work on exploration, and I'm getting the time to do that. So it's, it's just incredible, just really incredible. Thank you, Howard. Thank you.